This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Everybody and welcome to the United Kingdom and the centre of England. This is Tulster, a town that is one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements in the country. Well known for racing too, a yearly meeting that started in Easter 1896 and the first official horse race here was in 1928. Since 1948, it was a different type of horsepower that got the locals' attention. The local street names around the town pay a tribute to the Formula One drivers who raced at Silverstone Circuit. Here in early March, the home of the British Formula One Grand Prix is playing host to the races of the Creventic 24-hour Endurance Series. Uh, we're here at Silverstone Circuit in uh, uh, cold England for the start of our European uh, Championship 2018. We're here with, uh, on the grid of the 12-hour race, first part. Both our GT Series and Proto Series are uh, present here. Nicely enough, both pole positions are both in one line. Uh, it's, it's, it's very nice to see from the front. Uh, we're happy we're here, here on the grid and uh, we're happy for all the cars and uh, teams that have made their way here to cold England to uh, celebrate the start of the European Championship with us. Drivers have come from all over the world to compete. Many already know the organisers. The owner's done the Dubai 24 hours a few times. Uh, I think it's the next step for us. We're doing British GT with one of our other cars this year and the longer race is just more fun. We only do the French Championship, but then this year we go to Dubai and then Silverstone and maybe Navarra, so we are very happy to be there. In addition to the 12-hour race, there's a 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Championship race this weekend. Drivers can opt to drive in both series. Now both cars, uh, the Red Cam Racing Jordans 303, Seat, and uh, the Lamborghini from Castle Racing. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite some driving to do, but, but I like it. Thursday of free practice was a disastrous start for the Simpson number four car. We had a puncture failure on the hangar straight and we destroyed one of our G58s. We, we were out on track after the code 60 and we picked up a puncture and we, well, we, what we believe was a puncture and the car turned very heavily into the wall and it, it sustained very big damage. No way that chassis could race, so the team called for the car that was successful in Dubai, a 2017 model, to be shipped to Silverstone. The technicians had a lot of work to get the car race ready. Uh, well, we had all, all new uprights, wheel bearings, drive shafts, uh, gearbox updates, engine fluids, brakes, discs, bodywork, um, in order to get it ready. So it was quite a busy night. It's a huge tribute to the hard work of the team that they did get the car ready to start the race and they are confident the car will perform well. Yeah, I, well, I'm pretty confident the cars will be okay. Um, we've done the best job we can do, so hopefully, you know, all over to the drivers now. Qualifying took place in dry conditions. Uh, it was pretty good. I had to deal with a lot of traffic, but I think we got a pretty good lap out at the end. It's pretty difficult. Today was a pretty good day for qualifying. The uh, track was completely dry but a lot of traffic, it was really hard to just get a one clean lap. But not everyone was successful in the qualification session. Yeah, it's unfortunate uh, in qualifying. We did a good qualifying lap with the pro driver. Uh, would have put a second on the grid, or second in our class for the start of the race. But because it was such a long session, we decided to give the AM driver some more time running. Uh, and he made a bit of a mistake on the inside of Maggots and uh, took too much curb, but it's totally freak that he was coming up behind traffic, so he was braking at the same time, which meant the front of the car was very low, and it clipped the curb and damaged the bottom of the engine. It cracked the crankcase. Unfortunately, it's not repairable here at the circuit, so we had to retire the car. It's Saturday afternoon. The race is about to start. What can we expect? 
A tough race, a lot of rain, cold temperatures. So it's gonna be a tricky race. Uh, we want to finish uh, P1 of the category. Um, and uh, for me, uh, we'll take a good start and uh, stay P1 uh, of the category uh, for one my stint. Our expectation for this weekend are, are um, that we are going to see quite a battle for the overall lead, especially in the GT category, as um, we've got a failed A6 uh, Pro and AM class, and uh, we can expect, uh, due to the mix of uh, amateur teams, semi-professional teams, uh, that, that we can have a great race here. One o'clock Friday afternoon and the opening part of the Hankook 12 Hours of Silverstone about to get underway. And we're racing, bit of weaving in the background, no positions gained or lost as yet. At the head of the field, the number four Junetta claiming the lead in the first corner. However, its sister car, the number six, did not fare quite as well. It was a, not a very good start for me personally. Uh, I was a bit slow off the start finish line. I was too close to the car in the front and I was therefore my reaction to the lights was a bit too slow compared to the cars behind me where they were quicker than me uh, to, to go on throttle, that's it. That's why some, some of the GT cars went, went by. No major incidents at the start. The drivers enjoying the clean opening. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Silverstone is uh, very uh, unique and uh, to start with all uh, this big GT car, uh, it's uh, fantastic. But well, it's not incident free for long as the 31 and 85 collide. The car was uh, overtaking. I let him have the, the turn, but he was overtaking another, trying to get two for one. Surprised the car in front of me and uh, that guy checked up. I hit him in the rear, which I'm sure he wasn't happy about, I wasn't happy about but it destroyed some of the aerodynamics on the front of our car. Unfortunately, we were hit by Charles Putman uh, at the start of the race. I think he needs to go back and do his racing test. That was a very amateur, amateur move, but uh, you know, he's damaged the rear of our car, but uh, as with the Mercedes, uh, they're quite strong. So, so far it's holding together and we can hope it can hold to the end of the race. The Rothko machine did stay on track. So most of the time was lost for the 85 Another car about to come into the pits, the 964 Lamborghini with a punctured left rear tyre. We, we don't know for sure what, uh, what caused the puncture. We think it's uh, the new asphalt, which is really grippy. The tyre the tire gets too much load on it and uh, it, it's, it just breaks. We see a lot of cars having this uh, problem. Yeah, we cannot do anything about it. We just reduce the camber and uh, we try to drive a little bit slower. We, we cannot do anything else. Yeah, I saw the Lamborghini of the 964 struggling two laps before. Yeah, then I had uh, vibrations and directly after the vibrations the, had the puncture, so no chance to come to pit earlier. Unfortunately, yeah, I lost a lot of time and now we are on seven. A new tyre on the left rear for both of the cars and they're back on track, just in time for a code 60. We were three cars in, in uh, turn number seven. So I saw all the, the, the boss, uh, the first one go. And after I saw the Norma on my left, but I, uh, the turn number seven is right. And suddenly he appeared on my right, but it was too late. So he, I think uh, it was not a good thing to do. We have an issue with another GT car. We touched them at T6 and then we broke the rear wheel and then we need to repair that. We lost uh, something like 14 minutes, 40 minutes. So now we are very far away. The Bohemia Energy Ferrari, a big beneficiary of the Code 60 as they were just due to come in for their pit stop. A bit of luck because we finish in Code 60 when we need. So for the moment we are in a good position. You know, Lamborghini here is really strong, especially in the fast lap. But uh, we are a consistent car. I'm surprised also in the dry, in the wet because uh, I didn't expect this consistency. But for the moment, we are happy. Back to green flag racing, but the six Junetta is slow. That was a bit of a coincidence. So the the post uh, where I was looking at, they still had the 60 flag on, which we just realized I had to remove and get the green on. But I didn't have any radio. Uh, that, because of that part of the track. So probably the, the GT cars were told in the radio, like, green, green, green. And I'm like, oh, I saw them coming, like, ah, oh, there you go. And press the button and go. 
A fast-moving Ginetta is continuing its battle on track for the 24-hour prototype Endurance Series powered by Hankook. In the 24-hour GT Endurance Series powered by Hankook, the GRT Grasser 964 Lamborghini not going so well, dealing with their second puncture in the first hour. We had a puncture exactly after the start-finish line, so we had to do uh, the whole lap without the tyre, with three tyres, let's say. And after that, we go out with, uh, with slicks again. The choice of tyre will become even more important later on in the race. But let's take a look at the standings after 60 minutes. The prototypes lead the GTs in this combined field. The fastest lap time going to the number four Simpson Ginetta. Second place and only 52 seconds back, the number six Ginetta. Third in prototypes, the number 97 Norma of Craft Racing. Less lucky, 21st position overall. That means the fastest GT entry is in third. The EDEC number 17 Mercedes AMG has a 65 second lead over the A6 Pro Class entries. The second, the Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha number 11 Ferrari, which has a lap over the Porsche 29 of Porsche Racing. In SPX class, the Fox Motorsport 47 Audi is leading after an hour's racing, the speed lover 78 nearby, having already had their first pit stop. This is Endurance. Uh, for me, it's endurance is a big family, first of all. It's a big team effort. It's definitely not a one-man job. It's not just the drivers, it's a whole team. So pit stops are important. Calling them in at the right times, making decisions on tyres. Everyone has a big contribution towards this. This is endurance. That's the word. Silverstone Circuit is embedded in Grand Prix DNA. In 1948, before the Formula One Championship even started, Silverstone had had a race. The very first Championship Formula One race in 1950 was held here. And now, 68 years later, the circuit still hosts the British Grand Prix and has never lost its appeal. Oh, it was the first time we drive in Silverstone and it's a fantastic uh, track, you know. I, I see the race for uh, F1 and it's a very nice, very nice uh, track, sure. Oh, it's a brilliant experience. Probably one of the best circuits I've raced in my life. Uh, it's, it gets very, not emotional, but it's a superb feeling, you know, going through markets and Beckett's and, you know, it's going to Silverstone and it's you the start finish line before the start of the race. And you're like, wow, I'm, I'm just here where all the Formula One guys are. So it's, it's brilliant, it's fantastic. Oh, it's a fantastic facility, Silverstone is my favorite. Uh, the home of British motorsport. I grew up here. Uh, it's recently been resurfaced, so it's made the circuit pretty tricky while the, the releasing agent comes out of the, the new tarmac. But, you know, it's the same for everyone. All the tracks we go to with Cravantic are, are famous tracks for, for one reason or another. Silverstone is, is really fun because it has some great high-speed places. It still has a large number of blind turns, so learning the track and trusting the car as you turn into those turns without being able to see the exit, it's, it's a big part of it. So it's, it makes for exhilarating driving. The characteristics of endurance racing cars differ. So some parts of the circuit favor one type of car, whilst others have their advantages in other parts of the track. It's a fight for every corner because we are faster than them in corner, but slower than them in the straight line. So you need to fight always and always. That's really, really nice for them. British marshals are acknowledged as some of the best in the world, and they're not shy if you need a push out of the grass to continue your race. Charles Putman, the man put back in the race. The car was under steering a bit, and so I was you know, having to, to work through that. And of course, uh, it's, it's due to aerodynamic you know, damage, that sort of thing happens. But uh, when it regrips on the front, when you have understeer situations like that, and the car gets slow enough that it regrips, then the car wants to turn quickly. And it was what I call a lazy spin. Car barely went around, but we slid into the grass. And once you're on the grass, you're sort of stranded here when it's this wet. Our picture's showing the track perhaps just slightly more than damp, but the drivers are having a really tough time with the weather. It's not dry, but it's not fully wet either. The 29 fork Porsche hits the 963 Grasser Lamborghini. Both cars can continue, but proof that mistakes can easily be made. Well, one was uh, at the end of the hangar straight, um, so there was a lot of standing water, and there was one line that you could take where you wouldn't hit the standing water, and I approached it slightly wrong, and I went across a puddle, 
and I just lost the back end uh, under braking in a straight line, but you just couldn't do anything. I was a passenger. Hankook tyres are known for getting up to temperature and providing grip quickly, but the chilly conditions here in March are making things very different from what the drivers have been used to. It was uh, very slippery because it's too cold and the tyres don't get really uh, enough temperature, but uh, the conditions are equal for everybody, so it's, uh, it's racing here in Silverstone. It's just one minute it's raining, next minute it's stopped. Um, and the track's changing every lap, it's getting wetter, it's getting drier, it's not, it's not a consistent. My whole stint, it was sort of one or the other, uh, but it was good. Going off track, hands the advantage to your competition. One of the teams really profiting at the moment, the Bohemia Energy Scuderia Praha number 11 Ferrari. They've moved steadily up through the standings, despite not having a great starting position after a poor qualifying session. We usually fight for the pole, which didn't happen here in Silverstone. So we were a bit surprised, but anyway, the, lo the race is long. So we hoped for some kind of tricky conditions, which in the end happened. So from this point of view, we just kept doing the best what we could. And as it started to dry up, we, we went for the slicks and it was quite a good call. We gained some, some positions and we picked up some space and speed, which was important. But in the end of my stint, it started to rain again. Uh, so we, we had to stop and change tyres. So Matteo now is in the car. So we'll see that he, hopefully he can keep the same pace and we'll see what happens in the next hours because still it's really challenging race. A team that did qualify well, but ran into issues early on in the race, the GRT Grasser 964 Lamborghini. At the moment we are eight laps behind because now already we have two punctures. Then on strategy we lost a lot due to code 60 at the beginning. So we don't have too, too much expectations, we just do some practice and uh, and yeah, maybe, maybe we are lucky and we will get on, on top of the list on the end, but we will see. Their sister car is much higher in the standings, but in a competitive field, they'll need to battle hard to get back to the top of the class. They've now got a set of new slick tyres to help their charge forward. Three hours in, and the Simpson Motorsport Ginetta number four has a full lap lead over the rest of the field. The EDEC Mercedes number 17 running second. Third overall, the number 11 Ferrari of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. Red River Sports number 23 Ferrari leads the A6 AM class. But there's two more hours of racing to go today, so their lead is no guarantee of a good result. And with the Attempto Racing number 66 Lamborghini just 36 seconds further back. And third position, the 33 Car Collection Motorsport Audi, two laps back. A lot can still happen. In the 991 class, the number 111 from Track Club is leading by a whole lap. Porsche Laureate number 64 second, EDEC Sport Racing number 75 is in third. The title sponsor of the FIA approved 24 hour endurance series is South Korean based Hankook Tyres. But the organisation doesn't just support motorsport events. Uh, when you see a tyre supplier, we are a multiply uh, company, we are a global company. We are sponsoring also football, we do something here in the UK with rugby. We are doing uh, so many other events like uh, skiing and so on and so on. So it means we are almost everywhere. But the Hankook name is most associated with events like this. The motorsport is a kind of DNA for us because we can find so many data, we can find so many new uh, ingredients for, for the new tyre generations in the future. And competition is the really the toughest uh, um, uh, playground for the tyre supplier to show the performance. Involvement in the 24-hour series is used to improve Hankook products, making it a true partnership. Gravendic and Hankook will be our partners since a long time and we, I hope we will continue for a long time. And whatever we are doing here is not only racing, this is also very important for us to find information about the tyre, how the tyre work on uh, different type of cars, because we have so many different type of cars, we have so many different type of racetracks, we have any kind of conditions. As you see now here, it's extremely cold. When you go back in time two years ago at uh, Paul Ricard, it was extremely hot. So this gives us information for our new generation of race tyres for the future. All these data are collected and we are um, working on this data for the next generation of uh, race tyres. The number 85 from Pro Sport has served a penalty and is back on its way again. Before we looked at the standings, the GRT Grasser was fitted with slick tyres. Quite obvious now that we need wet tyres. Not everyone still pointing in the right direction. The number 6 and number 4 Ginettas both come to the pit lane in quick succession. Simpson Motorsport able to deal with them and send their cars out quickly. Well, the first car thought he had damage splitter, but it was fine. So he's gone for fuel, and the other one was just fresh out of tyres, driver change. And he's had a new wiper blade because it's not 
It's not clearing the screen good enough for him. Apart from that, they're all, you know, they're running okay. But the number six car, obviously not okay. Something's not happy under the car, so uh, I think we've got a dodgy clutch and something uh, something not so, not so good under the car at the moment. Just started getting a bit of uh, slippage going in the clutch up fourth, fifth and sixth. And um, that slowed us down a little bit. And when you when you start getting clutch slipping, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't lead to anything good. And um, furthermore, um, we were just starting we were cutting out going down the gears. There's some problem with the engine management between third and second. And it was actually cutting out, and we were just drifting through corners. And I got caught a little bit uh, on, on that hairpin, and I ended up uh, drifting straight through it and going through the grass. If you like to see cars rotating, this race at Silverstone has had more spins than an Olympic ice dance final. And that can cause perspiration for the drivers in those spinning cars. Uh, I take uh, the pedal gas too early and uh, I spin. I say in my head, uh, not the wall, not the wall, not the wall. The number 97 was lucky. He didn't hit the wall. On the right hand side of the picture, the number 17 e deck Porsche, not as lucky. C'est uh, l'Axel sur un vibreur. La voiture uh, est partie tout de suite en tête à queue. Et malheureusement, uh... as he accelerated on the vibrer, he, uh, the, the car just spun uh, on a very narrow uh, part of the track and unfortunately the wall was just there and he just hit the wall very, um, very, very strongly. The, it was a very big uh, hit on the wall, so the chassis is damaged. It's going to have to be uh, almost rebuilt by, uh, from scratch. The changeable weather conditions has played a part in shaking up the field. Well, we, uh, we wanted to be, let's say, uh, ahead of uh our pro-am uh, competition but uh, currently we are on, on place number four and uh, so we have to improve hopefully tomorrow this is a two-part race seven hours on saturday for you to make up any places you may have lost today making their jobs harder for the saturday event the 64 and the triple one who come together just before the end of today's competition it was too wet it was too wet really you know, I tried to, to pass the car 11-1 uh, uh, and uh, it was at the end of the straight line where the stand of F1 and uh, I, I tried to take the curve, I uh, put uh, the brake and the car was, uh, you know, turning. Yes, it's finished for our car because, uh, well, my car, no? No? No, no. You can repair? Yeah, we, we will try to repair the car tonight. Okay. We will see tomorrow if uh, the car will be on the, on the start grade. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you can repair the car. <laughs> A team manager with fighting spirit. Team managers are those who are coordinating the game. The 66 had their professional driver making up positions, being able to drive fast in the variable conditions. But perhaps Adrian Amstead should have slowed down slightly. Uh, I was a bit too fast uh, through Beckett's, uh, there was standing water there, there was a puddle uh, 10 minutes before the end and I, I spun out, which was uh, really stupid from my side. Although we're leading the class by two laps, but um, I'm going to go home and I could be pissed with me tonight. The weather forecast for Saturday, not any better. Yes, it's supposed to be quite wet tomorrow and even though the lap times will be a little lower if it's extremely wet, it's a little easier on the teams because as I mentioned right now, sometimes we're changing tires every 15 minutes, every seven or eight laps. That uh, it makes it a little more consistent. A spin for the race leader who continues without losing first position. Meanwhile, tactical decisions are being made for the second part of the race. We're lucky we filled up on the Code 60, so we're going to manage to push the car for the first hour. Um, hopefully it'll be dry, but I don't know. The weather report says wet, so we're just going to play it by ear. Six o'clock, the Ferrari of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha is the first to take the interim checkered flag. We've completed five out of the 12-hour race, so not even halfway through. A lot of excitement still to come in the remaining seven hours as we take a look at the standings after this first day of racing in the Hankook 12 Hours of Silverstone. Even with the late spin, the Prague-based Bohemia Energy Racing team still has a lap over the rest of the competition. Their Ferrari has completed 113 laps over five hours of racing. Second and third, both on the same lap, the fork number 29 Porsche second, 963 Lamborghini of GRT Grasser Racing in third, and they're also the top three for the GT Endurance Series. In the prototype Endurance Series, the Simpson number four Ginetta has carved out a huge lead over its competition. Second, the number 97 Norma of Kraft Racing, 
In the pits in third, the number six Junetta. The two-way battle in the SPX class has just one lap between the number 47 Fox Motorsport car and the number 78 from Speedlover. Right now the cars are in the intervention break after they've finished the first five hours of the Hankook 12 hour Silverstone 2018 and um, they're gonna rest there for the night in the rain some teams put uh, some covers on it some tents of course the cars will not be wet but tomorrow um, we can start again for the remaining seven hours of the race anybody working on the cars in the pits overnight take a 10 lap penalty of course most teams want to avoid that but Kraft have chosen to do exactly that despite having no issues to their car as yet uh, it's just that that type of car is not uh created for making 12 hour race so we just need to fix some things and make a fuel mechanics uh, in order to be ready for tomorrow we cannot make 12 hour race without mechanics it's impossible so we cut the race in two and we don't go to parfumé we are penalized by 10 lap but we we don't care and for those not working on the cars for us it's now also time to relax for all teams uh, of, of the Tankook 12 hour service stone, they can take their time, they can uh, sit down, have a warm coffee, warm up a little bit and um, get ready for tomorrow. This is endurance. Yeah, we will work uh, really hard tonight and uh, this is uh, endurance. We won't sleep I think, but this is, this is race, you know, sometimes the thing happens and we have to do our best to repair the car and to to go race tomorrow. Hashtag this is endurance. <laughs> It's a new day, welcome to Silverstone, Saturday morning, we're here for the second part of the uh, 12 hours uh, Silverstone and um, behind me you can see the prototype NGT cars uh, standing, waiting to race this uh, second part, seven hours um, uh, that are remaining in this race. As Park Ferme reopened, things have gone haywire for Pro Sport. Yeah, we had a little mix up with the timing there for some reason. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, we showed up and then uh, we were a little late, so we had to start from the pit lane. And uh, I haven't got really, really quite figured out how that happened yet, so we'll, we'll uh, do some review internally and see how hopefully it doesn't happen again. The rest of the field, including those who worked overnight on the cars, are ready in time and are set to start. I'll try and keep it on the black stuff today. Uh, it's going to be tricky. Getting these tyres warm is going to be what, what it's all about. So uh, very aggressive on the two warm-up laps. Try and get as much temperature as possible and then just take it from there, really. Just drive to the conditions. Uh, I need to push very hard, actually. So uh, I think we're about a lap down after yesterday. So my job is to try and get the lap back and hopefully try and get another one. So our advantage is mainly in the dry. So... If the weather stays away, we could go slicks, which is in our interest. Now I need to get my head down and uh, get a gap, really. We are first in the, the category, yeah. in our category. Yeah. Uh, 12 in the... in general. General, yes. Yeah. And uh, we will try to stay uh, first uh, till the end uh, of the race. The track perhaps a little drier than expected, but some rain forecast for later. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be as much as yesterday. I don't mind the showers. I mean, we had the rain at the beginning of the race yesterday, which I loved, you know, that intermediate kind of driving on the slicks as it was coming up. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, you could feel it. Uh, but when, when it's standing water, it's just, it, it, it gets a bit leery. Both Ferraris in the places where they finished yesterday, but there is a penalty to come for them at the end of the race. Uh, there are penalty for some overboost of turbo, but... Uh, I don't believe it, so they are discussing now with the technical director. When you're short shifting in, in very wet conditions like we are having to do yesterday uh, and coming off the throttle early, basically it, it spins the turbo up between the gear change and it can uh, overboost uh, the system uh, and cause uh, a pressure spike. Uh, both Ferraris has happened to, it's, it's unfortunate, uh, we need to look into it a bit more, I'm not technical enough to know exactly what the problem is but we spoke to the teams and we heard it was a ferrari mistake they uh, didn't look at the outside uh, pressure from the weather uh, so it, it should be 975 i think and they did it in another way 
So yeah, we have to penalize them because they have an advantage. Uh, so it's now up to two uh, laps penalties. Two laps penalties they get both cars. On the warm-up laps, any observant spectator can see the field is larger than it was yesterday. Yeah. These cars are not the only ones starting their race right now. As you can see over here behind me, um, we also have a second race starting together with part two of the Hankook 12-hour Silverstone. It's the Hankook 24-hour Silverstone. They will continue after those seven hours for another 17 and uh, stop tomorrow morning at half past 10. Uh, well, it's going to be busy the first seven hours today. And with the TCR cars right behind them, the second part of the Hankook 12 hours of Silverstone is underway. No major positional changes at the first corner, but the battle is on. The start was really great for me. I started P9 and after two laps I was uh, P3 or P2, I think. The car felt great, so, and, uh, so it was really, really good. I, I enjoy a lot. I had a lot of fun just running, just uh, keeping the car in, uh, on, the, on the surface and trying to not to make a stupid move with other drivers. Being uh, honest, the, the drivers here on the start, they were all professional, so they know what they're doing and they are not crazy uh, fighting for a, for a position when it's a 12-hour race. And I had the chance to move up and uh, it was nice. The car started today in championship order, so the prototypes are leading the field. We are in the front row. Uh, we had a very good start, so I was uh, driving down with car number four with Mike. Uh, we had about almost a full lap, um, but then we started having some issues with uh, misfiring the engine, uh, which actually went down to, then we thought it was oil temp, but that was created by another issue. Long story short, uh, I had to come back in uh, after about two, three laps, and the pace was there, but I had to come in within two laps, uh, and then we, we had to undergo uh, a lot of uh, work. Track conditions today are very different from yesterday, as Andreas has found out. It was wet, but it wasn't pouring like yesterday. So the amount of water on track, so it's a, it's a very porous track, and, and the tarmac is able to absorb most, most of the water if it's not pouring down. So it was wet, we had to have wet tires, uh, but there was grip. So the advantage of the G58 and the Ginetta car is the, the aero. So if you trust the car, the aero is there, it's fantastic grip, under braking, everything is fine. Slow, slow, slow speed corners, pretty much a little bit like a GT, but it's, it's a very stiff car, so the grip is uh, not, not the best, but these with all, all prototypes are the same thing. The clearing of the track helped Rothko too. The Mercedes doesn't work so well with the, with the full wet, we cannot get tyre temperature very easily, so we lacked a bit of pace for the first, first few laps of the race today. Uh, but as soon as, as soon as the, the, the standing water went and as soon as the, you know, the tyre started to work, the Mercedes AMG GT Rothko racing car was fantastic. Hand signals are often given to thank other competitors. However, Stuart Hall is a little more fierce as he lets the other drivers know how he's feeling. You know, when I'm in the car, I'm, I'm a fiery character and I want to get stuck in and Sometimes my temper balls over a little bit, but that's the way I am. That's what makes me tick. You know, it's nothing's personal. Uh, the minute my helmet's off, everything's done. As the weather conditions change, the teams decide to come in and change tyres. Uh, it was not so easy. It was a bit slippery. Yeah, yeah, yeah I pushed the, the brake, but um, the pedal got wide and I had not a, not a good pressure. Yeah, I, I went a bit off to the grass, uh, but nothing happened, so... It was okay. Drivers need to understand the grip levels on track and in the pit lane, and especially when heading towards the fuel station. I actually got into the car uh, first on the wets. We went out, and um, and after a few laps, I felt I was ready for slicks, so we made uh, the gamble to go into the slicks. And then um, driving into the refueling area, you have to go through the box, and it was still wet in the box, and the slicks were new, so. Um, so it was very slippery and then as soon as I drove into this box um, which was probably at around 6 or 7 kph I just slided into the wall basically uh, it wasn't very hard but it damaged the split on the front a little bit um, but we could continue like normal but it wasn't ideal first three laps were still a bit tricky on the slicks but then uh, I got into a rhythm and uh, and the car was very comfortable and good so uh, all was good as the track dries up most teams are going to slicks but some decide, for tactical reasons, to stay on the wets. We went a long time on the, on the rain tires, so we had to cool them down all the time and it was not so easy. But we was not so slow and we decided to, um, to, to wait a bit 
that it's easier for the car because yeah, it was leading safe, so it was safer for the car. After two hours of racing on Saturday, pretty much every team have changed tyres and drivers. Let's take a look at the standings after seven hours of the 12. It's still the Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari leading, but they will take a two lap penalty added on at the end of the race. So if the flag dropped now, the Porsche number 29 Porsche in second would be on the top step of the podium. Third overall, the 31 Mercedes AMG of Rothko Racing. The GRT Grasser Lamborghini number 963 is fourth in class. They have a two lap lead over the 911 Porsche of Herbeth Motorsport. The E-Deck number 17 still shown here, but that car was retired yesterday evening. Heading the prototypes, the Simpson number 4 Ginetta, 158 laps completed. In second, the Kraft number 97 Norma, Ginetta number 6 is still in third, despite being in the pits since the sixth lap today. Creventing has a long history of organising endurance races. Their focus has always been on gentlemen drivers and amateur teams. That means if the situation calls for it, regulations can be adapted. Well, for this uh, event only, we have uh, allowed the teams to use uh, methods to uh, warm up their tyres. Uh, as you can see behind me, uh, there's a team having a tyre warmer stand. And um, basically this was due to the uh, predicted extreme weather conditions. Last week there was uh, snow here in Silverstone and um, we see it as a safety issue. Um, that we, we didn't want teams to start the race with extremely cold uh, tyres on an extremely cold surface. And um, therefore, we gave them for this uh, race only the opportunity to use them. Yeah, what's important that the, 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 the tire works just by a small temperature uh, field. I don't know between 90, 90, 100 degrees. I don't know exactly on the when you when you don't use the, the, this this 90 degrees. It's, it's, it's like when you when you drive on, on ice, you have no 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 grip. The, um, the reason is why, why we need the temperature. If it's too cold, the tire surface himself it feels like a kind of, yeah, we can say plastic because it doesn't work. The tire must be smooth and smooth comes out from the temperature. Therefore, the temperature is so important for the race tire especially. And under these conditions here this weekend, it was really, really hard work for my engineers together with the car engineers to find the right car setup, also to make the right decisions, wet tires, slick tires, also combination for the front wheel driven car, front axle, slicks, rear axle, wet tire, to have some temperature inside at the rear axle especially. Next race is in Navarra, Spain. So hopefully, we won't need tyre warmers there. One competitor we didn't expect to see at all this weekend, the number four Ginetta. Their original entry crashed during free practice and was replaced by the chassis they raced in Dubai. Well, of course, yeah, that was an extremely unfortunate uh, occurrence on, on, on Thursday with the burst tyre. And unfortunately, he wrote the car off. But uh, you know, the lads at Ginetta and Simpsons did a fantastic job bringing the other car in from up in Yorkshire and the boys worked an all-nighter to get it prepared. Fantastic job. And the car, touch wood, has run like a dream. So, uh, yeah, we're very, very pleased. Uh, fantastic car. So, uh, yeah, there should be more of them in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the series, to be quite honest with you. I'm not so sure why there are not more prototypes. And another bit of luck. The professional driver allowed to drive longer than he was allowed before. Yeah, last year I was an FIA Gold. Um, this year... As I'm getting old now, I'm an FIA Silver, so I, it's great. I can do longer in the car now, so you get older and I can do even longer. <laughs> Means I must put my prices up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Lamborghini 963 and 11 Ferrari battling on track as they attempt to go by a competitor in the 24-hour touring car endurance series. Just in time, they noticed the purple code 60 flags. Quite a bit of debris has found itself on the track over the course of the day. The hard-working marshals take the opportunity of the Code 60 to get rid of it from the racing surface. That reduces the chance of damage to the cars. As soon as the track's clear, it's back to full-speed racing and the battles recommence right where they left off. Or at least some do, as one or two competitors have chosen to take a pit stop. One of the technical decisions that you have to make as a team manager. And with this weather, good tactical decisions are crucial. Basically, the track was drying. So everybody was trying to keep the, the, the rain tires going, you know, going in the wet to uh, cool them down and then uh, going out. So eventually uh, we were lucky that uh, we had a code 60 and uh, we were able to come in and, uh, and change drivers and, and go to slicks. So the timing was perfect. The speed lover team has new drivers and they're living up to the team's expectations. 
At first they started, they put us in SPX. After the qualifying, when I saw the lap time, the lap times uh, the young guy was doing, I tried to get in top 10. And I think with if uh, you take the general class, because we can't see it now on the screen exactly, I think we will end the place 11, 12. So I'm um, everything according to plan. And we're leading now SPX with, uh, I think, with two or three laps. So I'm a happy man. The 29 Fork Porsche calculating their position in class. They're not just looking at where they are currently on the track. I think on P3, but with that two laps from yesterday, we're leading. Even though this is an endurance race, everyone is right on the edge. The Porsche of Herbert Motorsport needs a little martial power to move its 911. I've overtaken a slow car. The weather, the weather condition is very bad. You have a dry line on the, on the left and the right side is just wet and the, we have slow cars. And they've overtaken a slow car. It was too fast, I couldn't brake. So I go into the gravel. Uh, the, I, I lose uh, some stones are coming into the cooling belt and then the belt is broken and we have no cooling. And so we change the, the belt and everything is, is okay. But we need time for the changing the belt. Uh. The weather, still the main challenge to the drivers. It's been tricky all day, and certainly offline it's very, very slippery. So it's been a challenge for all teams over the weekend because you've got low ambient temperatures, low track temperature, and tyres have been a, a real issue, but um, from a point of view of the temperature of the track, but uh, it's been exciting. It's still extremely dangerous to go off the racing line. Credit to all the drivers that these spins haven't resulted in more damage. The number 11 have now a three lap lead on the field. That means even when we take off the two penalty laps at the end of the race, they'll still be in first position. Second now, the number 29 Porsche GRT Grasa number 963 Lamborghini is in third position. Fourth is the number four Simpson Ginetta leading the prototype ranks. In the 991 class, the number 65 Porsche Laureate Racing entry leads by a lap over the EDEC Sport Racing number 75 in second. Two laps further back, Porsche Laureate, the number 64. Attempt Tool Racing leading the A6 AM class with their number 66 Lamborghini. Car Collection Motorsport 33, two laps down in second. A further lap back in third position, the FF Corsa Red River Sport number 23 Ferrari. This is Endurance. Our engineers, the guys doing the strategy calls, yesterday absolutely everything seemed to go right. So they, they called it perfectly. We always seem to be making the right fuel stops at the right time and getting on the right tyres at the right time. But it was certainly pretty challenging for the guys, that's for sure. A board hung out over the pit wall is the traditional way of letting your driver know what's what. Nowadays, that's just a backup, as most of the communication is done by two-way radio. Um, you know, we're radio. They, um, you know, we're, we're trying to relay back and forth the conditions and then the fuel numbers, um, trying to figure out our splits of the next thing. And uh, Nathan's constantly doing, he's got the whole program on his computer, so he's constantly running the numbers. Um, so, you know, it's... it's, it's uh, it gets interesting. You guys should listen to it sometimes, but you'd have to probably beep out a lot of stuff because we, we say things that may not be so appropriate. But the type of information passed backwards and forwards differs from driver to driver. Yes, we give our, our, our drivers a lot of instructions during the race. Sometimes they just ignore us. A lot of times they actually listen to us. I don't like communication. So basically, I don't want the chit chat. So basically, uh, fuel level and uh, you know code 60, Otherwise, uh, no communication. I, I just uh, want to focus here, you know, so I don't talk much. I don't. You just need it. If there is gravel in, uh, for example, turn four, and you arrive there with uh, with maximum speed, you know you have to be careful if there is gravel. And if the, if you don't hear this message, then you might, yeah, you might crash or you might lose the car, because you cannot know what will happen if uh, or what will be there without any message from the team. So we try not to give them too much information while they're going on circuit. So when he comes in the pit lane, I try and give him as much information what's happening around him, things he needs to do to the car, settings, yeah, as much as I can. And I've got a great team of engineers behind the, behind the wall there. Um, and you know, they're the guys making the calls, calling the shots. I give them the information I can. 
and then they make the decisions. And so far today, they've been they've been right on everything they've they've said because we've gone from what was a pretty desperate situation yesterday afternoon to, to to fighting for the lead right now. So you now it's all credit to them. Nine hours gone, and the number 97 Norma starts the last quarter of the race from the gravel. But that's nothing a strong pull can't resolve. The race is just as fierce as it was in the first laps yesterday. The Herbeth team know how much racing in the 24-hour Endurance Series is a real team operation. Of course, you could be sharing the car with up to four other drivers. You have engineers and technicians to work with, but you also might be asked to wash its parts. This is endurance? <laughs> also endurance, yes, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, everybody of us is a team member, so why shouldn't I help? And so there's no reason that I, don't, uh, that I should not help. And that one team, one goal is what endurance racing is all about. The Rothko number 31 is racing hard. It leads the race today and is trying to extend that to take an accumulated win. Not quite at that point at the moment. And now we're sort of fighting for the lead, so everything's a play for. Conditions are changing by the lap. Uh, Roll's done a fantastic job this weekend and uh, Dan Brown now doing a good job in the car. Troubles on track for both Ginettas. Yeah, I got forced wide by a TCR car and I just caught the grass. And I didn't know the car felt absolutely fine. Um, but the, the team said, look, we need to pit and remove some bodywork off the rear. But uh, from a driver sat at the front, I felt nothing. But uh, I think it was just a, a loose piece of bodywork. Rip it off and away we go. This is endurance racing. Not just the drivers need to show endurance, but the cars as well. Unfortunately, we got different issues on, uh, let's say, some drivers span, some others went off the, the, the grass, the conditions were really difficult, and that make uh, the, the arm of the steering wheel is broken, or almost broken, almost broken. Uh, the steering is completely to the left, so it's really difficult to drive the car, there is no feeling, no balance, plus uh, one of the drivers during one spin also broke the clutch. That means if we spin again and the engine go uh, run backwards, we'll break the engine, which is um, $40,000. So it's not worth it to keep running when we're not fighting for a position. And now the weather plays its part, and the drivers have to start using their windscreen wipers again. Uh, yeah, it was uh, interesting. Um, we came in, put the wets on. It was great for a few laps, and it started drying out, so it was all... It's all getting a bit nervous again. Everyone in the garage and even in the car, I was sort of, you know, starting to wonder, do we need to pit? Um, but we continued at pace, didn't push too hard, looked after everything, and all good in the end. I made a bad call. We were out on rains, and I thought we were, could go to drives on our last fuel stop, and uh, went out for about two laps, and was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. So we had to come back in and put rains back on. So um, beautiful English weather. We've learned a lot about racing here at Silverstone, and uh, next time we'll be a little stronger. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great experience, actually. It's obviously our first time in Creventic, but I think the drivers have done a superb job, uh, performed really well. Uh, we had an issue with the, uh, the car overboosting on the turbo, which has caused us uh, a bit of a problem and given us a penalty, but apart from that, I think it's run very well. During the second part of the race, the timing pages have just been showing the standings from today. Everyone started at zero laps, as this was also the start of the Touring Car Endurance 24-hour series race. So at the end of the race, we'll have to do a little bit of arithmetic. In the meantime, all the teams are getting out their calculators. Yeah, the, the, basically the car ahead of us is, um, um, had an issue yesterday late. And um, obviously, uh, we don't know what sort of penalty they might have had having to bring the car in for repair. Um, because obviously ours went straight to Park Fermi. So once that uh, gets calculated, um, we should know sometime in the next 25 minutes. It's been a great event for GTs and prototypes. Yeah, it's good. It's been a trying day, really. We, uh, we was behind. We got the lead this morning. Had some problems going slicks to wets and a puncher. Knocked us back. Uh, Steve did a great job on the slicks in the tricky conditions with a code 60 and, and, and pulled some time back. And then very nice for me as a pro to get told just drive flat out for a few hours. So happy days, really. So. Um, no, the car was very good and um, pulled it back into the lead. We're not, I think we're just good, probably going to finish second overall, I think. Um, but no, a great, great race. And um, we could have quite easily won, as I'm sure plenty of other cars could have done. But it, it's nice after 12 hours, it's still very close. The Simpson number four Ginetta will finish second on the lead lap. But the first to take the orange flag, the number 31 from Rothko Racing. 
They've completed the most laps in this part of the race, but they finished fifth overall on Friday, so we'll need to wait to find out their podium position in the overall standings. An orange flag is an unusual way to finish a race, but that's because the touring cars are continuing throughout the night until 10.30 tomorrow. That's also the reason the podium ceremony will not be held in the pit lane. We're here in the warm welcome centre of uh, Creventic for this event. Also the location for the podium of the Hankook 12 hour Silverstone as uh, the 24 hours are still uh, going on. So now we invited everyone, we cheer with a glass of beer and in a bit uh, we're going to go for the podium ceremony for the uh, winners. A fabulous race and an event where prototypes, GTs and touring cars have been racing together. We had all three divisions together on track and uh, still we could see the sportiveness uh, of everyone involved. Uh, there was, um, everyone respected each other, also people respected that they are racing in different races and not against each other within the separate uh, categories and uh, uh, we are very proud that uh, our teams and uh, our drivers have um, supplied us with this much uh, fairness this weekend. All the calculations have been completed and the overall podium for the 24-hour prototype Endurance Series powered by Hankook has shown the resilience of the Simpson Ginetta team. It's taken overall victory. The Kraft Racing 97 second and the Simpson number 6 Ginetta in third. In the 24-hour GT Endurance Series powered by Hankook and after all penalties have been applied, it's the Rothko Racing team that leave this 12 hours of Silverstone as the winners. The Porsche 29 Porsche second on the podium. The third place trophies go to the GRT Grasa Lamborghini team. In the classes, A6 Pro, same top three. Rothko Mercedes AMG GT, the victors. A6 Am, car collection motorsport number 34 takes the top step. Speed Lover Porsche number 78 wins SPX. And in the 991 class, the EDEX Sport Racing number 75 takes the championship points for victory back to France. Next up are the Hankook 12 Hours of Navarra from the 20th to the 22nd of April 2018 in Spain. And uh, it's once again going to be the GT and prototypes together. The GTs and prototype can look back on a very enjoyable and successful weekend as they're packing up to leave. The racing isn't finished here at Silverstone. The Hankook 24 hours of Silverstone with touring cars continues. And you'll be able to see all of the action from that in a separate programme. The GTs and prototypes will be back in Spain for the 12 hours of Navarra at the end of April. Come and join us as a spectator, or better still, as a participant. Go to www.24hseries.com.